One side of Manchester is very excited at the moment and we can see why. Ruben Amarim is going to bring his new tactics to the current Manchester United squad by bringing the attacking press of Pep Guardiola with intense fitness needed and great discipline and non-negotiable partnered with the defensive mindset of Jose Mourinho as his teams easily go into a block without the ball and become very compact and hard to break down. Ten Hag said that eras end. While he wasn't the man to end this era of the Premier League, Amarim could be the one. He already has experience beating Premier League teams, previously bettering Arsenal and destroying Manchester City in the Champions League. The way Amarim achieved those victories shows that he is a coach that operates a system of ruthless attacking and also resolute defending. These styles are stereotypically contradictory, but somehow Amarim has managed to make it work. The question is, will he be able to use those tactics to make United a greater team? Will he finally be the one to get United back on track? Or do the current players not have the ability to adopt this new philosophy? When Arne Slot joined Liverpool, there were worries if he would be able to continue where the inspirational Jurgen Klopp left off. Slot has immediately adapted to the Liverpool squad and the Premier League and has, in some ways, drawn out the potential of that squad in a way that Jurgen Klopp couldn't in his final season with the club. Now, granted, at that time, Klopp was already feeling tired. He had gotten too involved in the administrative process of the club, despite still having his responsibilities as a coach. This is one of the reasons Liverpool decided not to hire Ruben Amarim. Since Michael Edwards rejoined them, the team has changed their approach to how they conduct their business, with slots limited to only his squad and not the players Liverpool signs. Amarim has a trait that's similar to both Jose Mourinho and Pep Guardiola. He loves to be in control and have a say in how the club operates, especially when it comes to transfers. The manager, who retired early from football at 32 with Benfica, had the opportunity of starting his coaching with their reserve team. However, because he wouldn't have power, he left for Braga, where he had more control on the team. Now, there are other reasons Liverpool also didn't hire him. There were reports that when they were interviewing him for the job, he requested a full change of the coaching staff, preferring to bring his huge eight-man team with him. What a stubborn man. Pep and Jose would be proud. He also refused to change from his back three system, which Liverpool executives believed that they didn't have the centre-backs for and were also unwilling to recruit more centre-backs just for Amarim's sake. Liverpool also believed that there might be a fatal flaw in his tactical style of playing 3-4-3 or 3-4-2-1. Have Man United hired Amarim too quickly? Did they do enough research on him? Subscribe to our channel to check out more videos on how Amarim could help United. Manchester United fans are at the point that they are seeing how Slot is performing excellently with Liverpool and attempted to demand immediate results from Amarim. They have been patient with the coaches United have hired without much to show for, except, you know, the odd trophy here and there, with the major ones being the Europa League Jose Mourinho, one for them in 2017, and Eric Ten Hag's 2024 FA Cup win. But now, United fans want to feel the thrill of winning again and may not have that much patience. And Amarim's own reputation could work against him in this regard. When he was still in the Portuguese league, he did some incredible stuff as Braga's coach, beating different top-rated sides in the league, including Benfica away. Then he went to Sporting in 2020 and allowed them to dream again. He helped them to their first Portuguese league title win in 19 years in 2021, losing only one match. Then he did the same again in 2024. He continued his hot streak with them in the 24-25 season, with the team winning their first 11 games and scoring over 39 goals in the process. The other teams in the Portuguese league just didn't have a definitive answer to Amarim's style, which is built on solid defence, like a Jose Mourinho team, and ruthless attacking, like a Pep Guardiola team. United executives found his body of work so impressive 
that they added an extra 1 million euros on top of the 10 million release clause that they paid for him, just so that Amrim could get an early release from his 30-day notice period. The executives also see Amrim as having similar traits to a special man in Manchester United history. With Amarim, there is a potential of an immediate transformation of the United squad, as Amarim has experience reviving teams that have fallen below their usual standards. When he went to sporting, they believed in Amarim so much that they made him the third most expensive manager ever, and he delivered for them completely. Now he has to do the same with United. Before the present time, Amarim was familiar with United. Before he became a coach, he undertook a postgraduate degree at the Faculty of Human Kinetics at the University of Lisbon. At that university, Mourinho was Amarim's lecturer on the high-performance coaching course. As part of his teaching, Mourinho selected three of his best students to come and intern under him at Old Trafford, and Amarim was among those students. That week at Old Trafford served as an inspiration for Ruben. Working with Mourinho, who Amarim idolised during that period, put something in Amarim's mind to win at all costs. However, it isn't only Mourinho that inspires Amarim. Pep Guardiola also inspires him. Amarim has confessed that he watches a match like Mourinho does and has said that he loves Guardiola's work. So he combined the two of them and has arrived at a tactical style that is potent both in attack with possession and without possession and in defence. Amarim's team has been labelled as a confusing team because of this, but it really isn't. It shows how brilliant he is as a manager. Amarim typically plays a 3-4-3, which becomes 3-4-2-1, but it can be pretty fluid as there are rotations. When in possession and building up play, Amarim sets up his team in a 4-2-2-2 system with his midfielders in different lines ready to help progress play. The goalkeeper is an important part of this build-up and the play begins from him. One of the centre-backs will play with his back to the opposition goal and basically join the midfield so as to help evade the press by providing a more advanced passing option. Like Guardiola's team, there are rotations in Amarim's team, and with this they are fluid and can calmly pass their way out of dangerous situations and equally right into dangerous areas for the opposition without losing the ball. This is why Sporting had the third highest touches per opposition tackle in the first two thirds of the pitch. Only Man City and Inter Milan surpassed them in this regard in the 23-24 season in the top seven European leagues. Sporting, like City, are patient when they build up their play. In the Portuguese league, Sporting had more build-up attacks than any other team in the league. They had over 10 passes 126 times before they took a shot. Now, this is where it gets impressive. That same team had the most direct attacks as well in the Portuguese league, with 74. Amarim, as much as he loves possession like Pep, can also instruct his teams to attack more directly and efficiently, just like Jose Mourinho does. Under his coaching, Sporting weren't always known for the amount of times that they circulated the ball and patiently built up in the 23-24 season. So why is this so? Well, Amarim is a flexible coach. He approaches a game to exploit the weaknesses in the opponent's team. He's pragmatic and doesn't insist on a particular style of play. If a game needs to be slowed down, Amrim would instruct his players to slow it down and play a possession game. If they need to speed things up and go direct, this is no problem either. Now, it helped that Sporting signed Jokeresh, who's brilliant in situations where Sporting play that possession game and when they need to go direct. Will Manchester United be signing him? Watch our video on the striking sensation here to find out. When Sporting played direct, they tried to find Jokeresh as quickly as they could, with the wingbacks in this system being key to this. These wingbacks stretch play and feed Jokeresh as many through balls as they can, believing he'll get at the end of those passes and power through with his speed and strength. Now, United don't have Jokeresh. However, to an extent, Hoyland, Xerxes or even Rashford could play in a similar role, but this is not what Amarim prefers. By being unpredictable, Amarim will be a problem for other teams in the Premier League. When his team doesn't have the ball, he encourages his wing-backs to stay wide as much as they can to be ready for counter-attacks. He then instructs his three forwards to play close to each other. 
with the two players behind the striker occupying the inside channel and half spaces near the opposition box where they can cause damage. These three lead the pressing to help Sporting recover the ball back as fast as possible. He pushes his three centre-backs high up the pitch so they can pressure the opposition attackers. This pressing style is ripped straight from Guardiola's playbook and it has been successful so far for Amarim. In the 23-24 season in the Portuguese league, Sporting pressed intensely. They're second only to Benfica in winning the ball high up the pitch and getting a shot out of it. However, there is something about Amarim's style of pressing for his teams that's different from how Guardiola sets up. Pep loves to use Rodri, who is a technically secure holding midfielder, to help secure the midfield. In that holding midfield role, Rodri, who recently just won the Ballon d'Or, does everything. He creates, helps keep possession and wins duels. For Amarim, his choice of a defensive infielder is more similar to the kind of profile that Mourinho loves. Amarim just wants his defensive midfielder to win duels, cover up large distances and hoof the ball forward or pass to more creative players. Manuel Ugarte, who struggled at PSG, thrived in this role for sporting when he was there and he could rediscover his hot sporting form under Amarim. Another aspect of Amarim's play that's similar to Mourinho's is when pressing doesn't work for his team, he instructs his team to defend in a 5-2-3 or 5-4-1 deep block. The idea behind this is that Amarim doesn't want to give opponents the opportunity to play through the middle and force them to the wings. Then, like Guardiola, he encourages a centre-back of the back three to press the opposition. Now, This is daring and yet at the same time conservative. Unfortunately, him being a combination of both Mourinho and Guardiola hasn't helped him reach a solution to a flaw in his tactic. By having his wingbacks far and wide, Amarim's teams could be in trouble when the wingbacks lose the ball. His attackers play close to each other, so they can't easily provide support, and the same goes for his midfield pairing. So, if his wingbacks should lose the ball, it could be devastating. It's high risk high-reward football. This was a problem for Sporting when he was with them, but eventually worked as the players got used to it and bought into the philosophy. So, will this be a problem at United with their current players? Amarim is pragmatic, and he'll surely be tweaking his system to suit the league and also draw out the potential of his squad. He can be as stubborn as both Guardiola and Mourinho when it comes to his ideas, as I mentioned earlier. When Sporting signed him, he told his players to get on board with the system or get out. Like those two coaches, Amarim is a disciplinarian. When he was at Sporting, he made sure the club sold a player, Islam Slimani, because he lacked commitment to the team. However, Amarim is not as aggressive as Mourinho, and as Bruno Fernandes pointed out in a recent interview, Amarim has the habit of defending and protecting his players in the media, something it seems United players resented Ten Hag for a lack of this. Now, this type of figure is actually necessary for United, who seem to be a group of individuals rather than a team. The expectation on Amarim is high. Interestingly, United hired Sir Alex Ferguson in November as well. Alex Ferguson also came from a team that's not part of Europe's top five leagues. Ferguson came from Aberdeen, the Scottish League, to United and coached the team for 26 years, winning 38 trophies in total. How well can Amarim do this time?